I would like to introduce Bob from eBay. He, um, give him a Yeah, I do. Yes, okay. thank you. And that may have been the most interesting mixer uh, at a conference I've seen. So thank you for that. So hi, everybody. And wow, I'm really surprised at how much energy there is in the room, even before the mixer, uh, at, at you know, 10 o'clock in the morning for a bunch of uh, technologists to be so uh, alive. Uh, I think it's, uh, it says great things about this weekend. So I'm, I'm very glad uh, that you're here. And we're, uh, as eBay, very happy to welcome you here. Um, my name is Epson, and I like to um, <laughs> exceed your vision. So, um, but uh, actually, uh, my name is Bob Page. I'm the vice president of the analytics platform and delivery team as, uh, within eBay. Uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, we have used Joomla for uh, going on, geez, almost three years now um, in one form or another. Um, so. Um, I want to tell you just a little bit about that and our, what we do around innovation, how we use open source for that, and how it relates to you. Um, but I'm not going to take 45 minutes to do so. So I want to say first, thank you and welcome right, to being here. Um, uh, I also want to tell you that we're going to be looking at the old slides that we did a, a week ago. So um, some of the information here is going to be out of date. Um, Michelle, can we put the new slides up? Okay. I do want to tell you about, about eBay, though. You, you may know who eBay is, um, but I want you to know a couple of things about us. We are the commerce leader. We are the, large, the world's largest online marketplace. Uh, we have uh, over 300 million listings live and on the site at any one time. It's actually well over 300 million. Um, we are doing about 20% of our business today is done via mobile. People actually um, pushing the button, the, mo the buy button on a mobile device, um, significantly up from years past. We will probably do more than about 10 billion with a B dollars in mobile transactions alone this year. So um, we're into mobile in a big way. Um, we have um, also we look at ourselves not only as a commerce leader but also as a technology leader. Um, our uh, Teradata and our um, Hadoop platforms alone have about uh, 9 billion dollars in, sorry, 9 billion petabytes. Um, if I spent 9 billion dollars on those systems, the uh, CFO would not be happy with me. But uh, 9, uh, nine uh, petabytes uh, uh, installed and sort of instantiated, but we're close to, depending on how you count it, about 100 petabytes. Uh, in total, disk space that are spinning or that are SSDs. Um, and for those of you keeping track at home, that's about a tenth of an exabyte. So you've heard that here first. Um, what else can I tell you about eBay? So um, I want to talk about open source and what we do around open source. And first of all, why? Why, why do we use it? Well, obviously things like, uh, you know, LAMP stack, et cetera, are, are pretty common uh, used. And, um, and we use those. We use a lot of open source technologies. Uh, but we also uh, contribute to a lot of open source technologies. Why do we use them and contribute to them? It's really around the ability to innovate, time to market, the creativity within the marketplace, but also allows us to uh, move at the speed in which we feel is the right set of investment. Free is not, nothing's free, right? We all know that. Um, so we, we use open source not because it doesn't cost anything, because for the most part, especially in an environment like ours, uh, there's a significant cost to anything that we bring in because we do it at such scale. However, um, we make a, a big investment in our open source technologies by uh, adding to it. So um, we have, back in 2000, are you looking to ask me a question? Sure. Is that mine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. We're agile. <laughs> All right. All right, kids. Eject your thumb drives before you pull it out of the machine. Just uh.
Where's the fun in that? The fun comes later. When you're, when you're on stage trying to say something. Uh, all right, you know what? I can just go push the button here. Here, here, let me, I'll do that. Thank you. All right, we're good. All right, welcome. <laughs> all right, so just to back up some of the facts, one thing I didn't mention to you is uh, many people think about eBay as kind of an auction site. We, 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 that's where we grew, grew from. We love auctions. But the reality is about two-thirds of our business is actually fixed price, new inventory. Probably didn't know that. Uh, also, about 20% of our business is cross-border. Um, these are folks, for example, maybe in Australia who are buying from uh, folks in the UK, uh, for example. And so we see that the, the, the people actually want to break down the barriers of geography and look at this as a global marketplace. And then um, I mentioned also some of the technology. Uh, we do have about 75 billion um, database calls every day. Um, so there's a lot going on here. The other thing that's new about eBay is um, personalization. We are doing a lot around being able to provide folks with a personalized view and a personalized experience. This is one example of something we are rolling out now. Um, we call it the feed. And you're able to um, dynamically add the things that interest you, and then you've got very uh, engaging experience for things that you might be interested in. In this particular case, it looks like um, Victorian uh, door hardware is something that's very uh, important to this individual. The reality is you can find it on eBay, and that's great. Okay, thanks. So, is it what? It's not built on Joomla, no. Not, not eBay.com. Um, and then I want to just talk a little bit about our stack within my organization and the business intelligence stack. This is kind of a generalized, I won't go through all the details, but at the lowest level we've got kind of all the ingest of all the data flowing from all over the place. Then we've got some significant systems that are storing a lot of this data. And then on top of that, we're able to make the data available back out to our businesses, to our customers, to our, actually to our sellers as well. Um, and what you see on the very left in red is what we call Data Hub. I'll talk just a little bit about that since that is our uh, Joomla-based. You can go on from there. So um, we, we're heavily invested in some technologies like Joomla as well as Hadoop. And we are contributing as well. eBay is. We have a couple of internal development uh, efforts, Turmeric and QL.io, uh, that are now available on the ebayopensource.org website that you can log in and you can go play with. So um, a little bit about our, our journey with Joomla. Um, we, we really wanted to build uh, a sort of an analytical platform, sort of a community-based platform. And we thought, what are the right set of technologies we need? What are the use cases we need? How do we sort of storyboard all these things? What are the best sets of technologies to use? Um, we actually have implemented that as what we call um, Data Hub, but we have also uh, since then leveraged the Data Hub and the Joomla tech stack and the things that we've done on top of that to create some other products as well, uh, which I won't really go into details because they're in beta and you know I had to you know kill you all before you left the room, so I don't want to do that. That's bloody. So the Data Hub though is our internal analytical community system, if you will. Um, it's been described as kind of a social network for people working in data, a one-stop shop for anything related to data, search engine built in, user forums, workflows. Uh, it's an ability to be able to encapsulate other technologies, uh, such as our reporting technologies, with, within a, you know, an iframe, for example, to ha have a seamless experience. We had to actually bring in a bunch of new technology in the company and rewire the way we do authentication uh, so that we could, uh, uh, from one sort of focal point, which would be the, the data hub, be able to pass a lot of the credentials to the other systems so that you didn't have to log in to every single screen and subscreen, um, which we had to do at first. So this really drove a lot of good behavior within the entire company, okay? 
So just a little bit about our, our journey. Um, we started early in 2010 thinking, what are we going to do and which way should we go? Um, we, we obviously picked Joomla, right, or else I wouldn't be talking about it. Um, I do want to later rest the notion that we picked it because we liked the color scheme. Now, <laughs> we do like the color scheme, but that wasn't the reason why we picked it. Um, we really liked the technology. Um, we, from there, what I want you to notice, though, is we went from sort of the assessment to an alpha in three months. And, um, you know, this is, for a large organization, this is the speed of light, right? And this was one of the really great things that Joomla brought to us. From there, a lot of what happened between the alpha and the beta and the sort of release was all about refining and getting feedback, et cetera. But most of that was not Joomla related. That was all about the infrastructure and you know, the workflows and all the mock-ups that we would do to make sure that we're sort of um, making sure that the use cases that we have for our particular users are being served. So it's, uh, it's been available for a little over a year uh, and it's been growing uh, adoption like crazy. Just a couple of quick notes about it. We're actually pretty proud of the way we've developed our workspaces within the Data Hub where um, you've got uh, an activity stream, you know, a la your favorite social network about what your contacts are doing uh, or what they've done. Um, we've got um, content that we actually have uh, a, a dedicated community manager who's looking for the gems, if you will, that are uh, embedded within the community and bringing them up as curated content to say, this is some featured stuff that you might be interested in. Um, we have uh, introduced just recently a recommendation engine that looks at what you're looking at, what others like you are looking at, and recommend new, new uh, areas of the uh, data hub or new folks to follow, et cetera. Um, also to great, uh, 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 to great acclaim, and one more. And so we also allow you to create your own personal workspace, not just the global workspace, where you're kind of doing a mashup and you're sort of dragging and dropping the visit, uh, the site experience you want to see uh, by mashing together different reports, different graphs, um, different ways in which you can tell stories through the content explanation bars, et cetera. Um, and it has, and what you don't see is below this, you've got things like forums uh, within every page you could, or every report that might show up, you can have a dialogue about it as well. Uh, and we have dedicated forums uh, also. But this very, very powerful stuff, again, all, all based on, on Joomla. And then Project Compass is um, a, it's the internal code name. It's actually externally known as eBay Insights. Uh, it is a, um, also a very quick iteration project that we incubated and got live to the site. Now, again, it's in beta form. Please do not tweet about this. Um, uh, but it allows our, our top sellers, the sellers who do very, very large volumes, to be able to go back and look at two years of history uh, and compare what they've done versus what others in their categories have done. Uh, and gives them a very interesting and compelling way in which to see um, how they're doing within the sort of eBay ecosystem. Okay? And so, yes, we've consumed some stuff, we've built some things on top of that, but we also feel it's very, very important to give back. Right? So I want to talk just about a few of those things. I won't go into details about them. Um, I want to tell you about the philosophy, and the philosophy really is whatever we can give back, we will. Now, if it's proprietary, if it's something that is going to be a competitive advantage for us, if it's something that the legal team feels, maybe step on somebody's patents, um, you know, or if it's, if it's just too eBay specific, um, then we won't do that. I don't have my cell phone on me, so that's not me. Um, okay. Um, so a few, I want to just um, highlight a few here. I'm not going to go into details, A, due to time. B, to the fact that um, Lewis is going to talk about this this afternoon. So if you go to his session, he'll sort of do a deep dive on some of these things. Uh, but we have, I think you probably know, about 10 months ago, uh, we published the, the unified content model. Didn't submit it, but we have a lot of discussion about it within the Joomla community. Uh, team is forming to look at whether it makes sense to submit formally. Uh, we're very excited about it, and it, it, it's sort of the foundation for um, all the sort of innovation that we have around Data Hub. Um, we have, uh, I think, the MVC class that you know about, classes that were added in May uh, in 12.1. Uh, and hopefully, cross fingers, 
Um, we've got a new keychain class that extends the registry class that'll be in 12.3 uh, next month. Uh, we also have some things that are in the works. Again, uh, hit up Lewis for these. Um, and so we've got, uh, we've got three different things being prepared here around the data mapper class. Um, we've got a scheduler, think of it like cron, um, that allows us to fire off demons in the background and do restarts for long running things that do error recovery, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and for identity, think of the new identity management, unified identity management, like unified content management, but instead of content objects, these are identity objects, like users or groups or whatever. Uh, and it's sort of tied in with what we're doing today uh, in sort of our next generation of, uh, of Data Hub. And really, that's it. That's what I wanted to cover. I mean, the fact that um, we are... I think great partners uh, with the community. We want to continue this investment and make sure that um, we make Joomla stronger. Uh, and I thank you for your contributions as well. And again, thank you for attending. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. OK, we go further with, with uh, Kyle. I think I have to fill a little bit of gap or doing some justice style. Okay, good. No, not really. So you need a second micro or just one? We can you can share. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. What do we need? I'm just trying to see if I can stream this on his desktop or anything, but I don't see the option. Okay. All right. Well, thanks to, to Bob for that. Thanks to Bob for that great presentation. Uh, hey, everybody. I see a whole bunch of familiar faces and a whole bunch of new faces. Uh, I see Ozimek just slipped in the back. Wonder why he's here so late. What was going on last night? Uh, <laughs> No, that was, a, that was a great presentation. It leads into our presentation. Uh, some of my personal experience with working at eBay and some of the things that uh, I was able to contribute along with, uh, along with the Bug Squad and all the current core teams to Joomla. Uh, we're going to talk about Joomla 3.0. Hopefully you know all about it since it's been released for a while now. Hopefully you're, you're all using it against all uh, recommendations to, to use 2.5, right? Uh, so hopefully you're going to recognize a lot of what we're talking about. This is Mark Dexter. Uh, he's the, the man with the plan for rolling all this stuff out. So I'll let, you, I'll let him introduce himself too. Uh, yeah, I'm Mark Dexter. I'm kind of a newbie at Joomla. I've only been here four years. Uh, and uh, I've been on the PLT for about three years. And main thing I do is coordinate the bug squad and try to keep the trains running on time. Awesome. And I put his... His username from the forums, but I don't even think Mark's on Twitter, so don't try to find him on Twitter. No, no. I'm an old guy. He's old school. So I'll start off. Uh, I'll hog up most of the time because that's my style. And uh, I'll talk about Joomla 3.0 UX. Do this <laughs> Mark can slap me and tell me when I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing, as he typically does. So uh, I work at eBay. I'm the principal usability engineer. And what that means is I was responsible for all the, uh, the UI and the UX for the data hub, which you saw a couple screenshots of. Um, and at eBay, we tend to really push technology. Um, I built everything by hand, all the views, because we used the UCM, the Unified Content Model. We couldn't use off-the-shelf components. So everything we have, basically, uh, I think the only thing that we have that's an existing component still is Kunina. So I know Matias is in here. Woo, Kanina. Yeah, and Oliver. Um, so everything else we had to build, right? So uh, I'll explain why we chose Bootstrap and, and why we, we went that route. So obviously at this point, I'm sure you all know Bootstrap from Twitter, right? Is anybody here that doesn't know what that is? All right, good. This is for you two. Um, <laughs> basically, Stand up. Stand <laughs> yeah. Up. yeah. You should be ashamed. Um, 
Bootstrap is just basically, uh, it's the most complete and massive UI framework that there is out there. It's open source. Um, they had a similar problem at Twitter that I had at eBay. Uh, they had to build internally all these UIs and all these dashboards and all these different sites and everything was segmented and different and nothing was uh, the same user experience. So at the time I was talking to, to Lewis and we were gonna actually build our own UI framework and it was gonna take a lot of time, it'd be hard. And at the same time, uh, Bootstrap turned into version 2.0. 1.0 was kind of this incomplete thing that was neat, but we couldn't really use it. Uh, 2.0 had all these things that we needed. It was all the UI that we could run into. It's built on less CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, HTML5, and then at 2.0 they added responsive, which is a huge buzzword. So from my time at eBay and uh, building Project Fork as a component for Joomla and working on Joomla 3.0, I can assure you that the default things that come in Bootstrap allow you to build anything without writing one line of CSS. And there are, uh, there are people that would debate with me on that you need to write a different style of CSS that's unique to all these things. But for my usage of it, I wanted to be able to use one CSS library and stop writing CSS and supporting it and updating it and having conflicts, but to do any UI. And what you do is you just get creative with the HTML, which is super cool. It's a different way of thinking about using HTML and CSS. But as seriously, at, this, at one point or another, I have built at least these probably 100 different types of UIs uh, with Bootstrap. So I'm at eBay, and this was perfect for us. We, re we rebuilt our entire massive Joomla site using Bootstrap. Going on for uh, a couple years at the, in the background was the JUX project, which for Joomla is the Joomla User Experience Project. Uh, it was a really kind of grassroots campaign. Uh, we felt like Joomla st still looked like Mambo. Any people know Mambo? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Mambo was great at the time. Joomla 1.0, it was revolutionary. The UI was different. I started using it because it had these beautiful icons from food. I think it was like three O's, food icons. Um, yeah, I started using it strictly because it was pretty. But after years went by and versions went by, it was kind of getting stagnant. So we figured it was time to have a team. And we worked with some of the core guys to become an official working group. And we were empowered to change all of Joomla. So how did it happen? It's, it's events just like this. Uh, over the course of a few years, we traveled, I personally traveled all over the world, uh, talking to people, uh, kind of doing, like I said, grassroots campaign. We, we would talk to people, they would have the same problems, the same frustrations, the same fears that we had. And eventually we finally just got the green light and said, let's go build this thing. It was a, a really modern process, I think a, a little untraditional to Joomla. Joomla traditionally would be in the mail groups, right, the Google groups, uh, and it always seemed like it was in some back room, which it really wasn't, uh, much, to, much to the opposite to what people thought it was. It was actually very open, but it was still hard to figure out what was going on. We talked over Skype. We talked over forums on the JUX site. We had Skype chat rooms. We had Twitter, uh, Google Plus conversations. We were all over the place, and we were using modern technology like GitHub, GitHub was a huge factor in this whole process for us because GitHub makes it so much easier to collaboratively, collaboratively work on things uh, rather than doing the old way of SVN and the old repositories that they used. Um, so this is really, it, it was the most modern and it was by the people. It was, it was just random Joomla people around the world jumping in Skype chat rooms and saying, can I join the project and getting together and fixing things. Phase one uh, was just basically feature parity, right? That was, that was actually one of the first things that, that Mark told me. He said, this is great, we, want, we like Bootstrap, we like jQuery, we like all these things, but we can't go backwards. So you have to have everything you have now, but you have to have it in Bootstrap and jQuery. So uh, that's what we did. We, we mimicked all the, the current things, we rebuilt things, we built new admin template, we built new front end template. So basically we got to the point where after all that work, after months of work, we said, okay, we're right where we started, right? We have everything Joomla has today, but it's over in Bootstrap, so now we can play a little bit. The second phase is, is the fun phase for me. We got to start working on UX. 
And if you don't know what UX is, it's user experience. It involves the user interface. It, it involves user interactions. What happens when I hover on things? What happens when I click on things? It's basically the whole feeling that you take away from using Joomla, right? And it starts with every aspect. It starts at Joomla.org when you see the home page, right? That's your first experience with Joomla. So uh, we worked on the installation process. Then we moved on to the front end, the site. And then we also worked on the back end all at the same time. And we did an incredible amount of work in a really short amount of time. It was uh, a few months, really, that we were working. And like I said, the, the Bug Squad and Mark and Andy Tarr and everybody empowered us. They were just kind of, they would peek in on what we were doing and say, whoa, 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 you're, you're forgetting accessibility. Yeah, so we'd have to tack on things all along the way. But we were really empowered to work on our own and rock on the code and knock it out really quickly. The way I... Uh, I talk about the JUI. The JUI is the centerpiece of the JUX. It's the user interface library. We built it on Bootstrap, but it's not just Bootstrap. Uh, and this actually ships with Joomla 3 so you don't have to install this stuff. But it comes with Bootstrap. We extended Bootstrap for our usage, right? We made it more accessible. We added right to left languages, and we, we added other UI that Bootstrap doesn't have that we know that Joomla component developers need. Uh, we dropped in a font icon library called IcoMoon which is fantastic. There's thousands of icons to choose from. Uh, it'll work on retina displays. It doesn't look all pixelated. You can infinitely scale it because it's vectors. So this font, font library is awesome. Uh, jQuery, obviously, since Bootstrap's built on jQuery, and this was a huge thing for the community. They were super excited to get jQuery in there. And we had to add jQuery UI, too, uh, for the back end. Uh, and it's optional on the front end as well. But for certain elements, you just need jQuery UI for, for like the drag and drop rows that we have now in articles, right? And uh, the other thing was chosen select boxes. So this is a super cool JavaScript uh, snippet that lets you tack it onto a select box. And it does cool things like, well, first of all, it just looks pretty, which I'm a big fan of. But uh, if you have a list of over 10 things, it automatically adds a search box to the top of it. And you can start typing an autocomplete, and it'll filter out the whole list. So you'll see this at the very first step of the installation process because we have a ton of language options and you can quickly filter out the one you want. Speaking of installation, this is actually, I would say, out of everything that we've done, this was the most complete end-to-end -end rebuild of the UX and everything, and I'm really proud of it. Joomla used to have this like six or seven, six eight, 25-step process to install. Uh, one of, one of which was just a whole license page when it, it, could, it could just be a link to the license, right? So uh, we worked hard. Peter from No Numbers here, he worked really hard uh, on this. Lots of fun collaboration to crunch it down to a three quick step process with some cool features like you can email yourself the configuration file uh, and it's very safe too. It'll, it'll hide the password and things like that if you want to. So really proud of that. That was the one thing that we really rebuilt from the ground up. The admin GUI. Uh, this was kind of my baby. The name of the template is Isis, uh, and it was in the same name, it was the Egyptian goddess name, uh, continuing from like Kepri from Joomla 1.5 and Hathor, Andy Tarr in the house. Uh, so we rebuilt it for Bootstrap. It's completely responsive. It's a whole new UX. Uh, you should, like I said, if you haven't checked it out, you should. It's, it's the centerpiece on all the components that will be installed. We're trying to create one consolidated, concise UX. A lot of people at first didn't understand that I was also attacking the front end with this because the front end to me was even more problematic and disconnected than the back end of Joomla. You didn't have all the same classes and UI options. Component developers were adding their own libraries. Essentially, a component would look like an iframe inside of a Joomla site, right? You'd have like multiple navigations. It was ridiculous. So now, those component developers have all these UI options because as we all know, there's components like Project Fork, like my own. There's all these different UIs that you want on the front end of Joomla, not just the back end. So we built a new template. It's also completely responsive, and it kind of lays the groundwork and the framework for everybody to, to, to build their components. Less is a big thing. Sorry. Does everybody know what he means when he says responsive? Does everybody know what that means? OK, good, because I didn't. Responsive just means that as you resize the screen all the way down, things will change and you, you have the option to completely change the UI to fit any device. So uh, less is more. Less is probably the coolest part about Bootstrap and the last thing that I really dug into. I didn't even get it first. Uh, 
Bootstrap comes with all the, it, less is just, uh, it works with CSS. And you can use things like variables for your colors. Uh, if, you, if you're a CSS developer, if you're used to doing WebKit border, Mo's border, all these different borders, uh, they have these things called mixins where they allow you to do one line to just define a border radius. Lots of cool stuff like that. And it's way fancier than that if you dig into it. So the cool thing about, uh, the cool thing about less, how we used it, is that in your template, everybody knows template.css, right? But now we have template.less in a less directory. And what you do is you call out to the, the media folder, which is where all of the, the JUI files are. You include anything you want to include from that, right? But then anything you want to change and customize for yourself, you override it. So like to change all the colors of Joomla, of any component that will be installed, anything you're going to run across, all you do is change variables.less, right? If you want to get crazier, you, you make your own mixins.less, and then you start doing all kinds of fanciness. When you're done, you compile to one template.css that's minimized, and it's going to power all the UI of everything you run across in your Joomla site, right? All from your template. No more of these components battling each other from their own CSS files. It's, this is actually, to me, the most revolutionary part about all of this. So once everybody gets on board with this, you're really going to get to enjoy this. It's just not happening now. We haven't even really got to play around with this idea because people are building their components. But once it's done, it's going to be fantastic. So just to illustrate that, these are some just mock-ups I did. These aren't actual components. But just to show you, uh, different UIs that I built on a demo site, like a blog, a gallery, a shopping cart, events calendar, uh, activity stream. This is all without writing one line of CSS, right? This is just stuff that comes in Joomla. Speaking of all that kind of stuff, adoption rate, right? Everybody, when you change from any major version of Joomla to another, they're worried about adoption. Should I use 3.0? It takes people forever to update their components or their templates. It's the fastest adoption I've ever seen, and I'm really proud of that. I think that it's a testament to backwards compatibility that they were really big about, and I think it's, for us, we made it super exciting for people to jump onto 3.0. Template developers are excited because they can just do that one template.css file, and now they can support all components, right? You buy templates from clubs, and they're like, this template supports Kunina, or this template supports Jam Social. It won't be any of that. This template supports Joomla, right? So anything that plugs into Joomla will work in it. So everybody's jumping on it. Same thing on the extensions end. Uh, these guys actually, a, a lot of these guys started doing it before, before 3.0 at all. They were already adding Bootstrap to their, to their components anyway because they love the UI. So once it was announced that it was going to be in 3.0, everybody rejoiced because they could drop all their crazy things that they were doing. I always pick on, uh, where is he? Nicholas? There he is. I keep it backups. Wonderful component, probably the most popular component, right? Some of the... Uh, <laughs> before, before you clap too much, I was about to say, some of the ugliest UI I've ever seen in my life, right? <laughs> Right, by far. So he, he was one of the main guys, right? <clears throat> he was one of the main guys that was super excited because he was like, great, now I can drop all this crap. <laughs> I can just use Bootstrap. And it, he, he was one of the first people to release things for 3.0, so thank you for that. And his stuff does look great. It already looks great, right? Which is really exciting. But everybody's kind of falling in line. If they haven't released a component for 3.0, they're working on it. I guarantee it. Speaking of that, uh, and I just updated these numbers, there's uh, over 1,000 ready to go for 3.0. That's 10% of the 10,000. And uh, Robert Vining actually tweeted, that's actually 20% of the Joomla 2.5 extensions. So that's a more significant number, right? Yeah. So the, the guys that were already active in updating for 2.5, one-fifth of them are already ready for 3.0. So that's a huge thing. Do you guys remember when 1.5 came out? It was like three years before components worked with it, right? <laughs> We aren't even two months. Yeah, we aren't even two months. Two months. Yeah. This is this is really important. This is awesome. So what's next? And this is kind of jumping ahead. Uh, he's going to talk about some 3.0 features, but just from me, from my end, 3.1 is right around the corner. Uh, we're going to be adding more icons, and we actually might possibly change the icon set to font awesome for some reasons. N no, nothing fun about that, but uh, it is actually more compliant with Bootstrap, so it's probably a good thing. Uh, we're going to add more jQuery functions. Right now, if you install it, we, you actually have to run MooTools and jQuery. And we want MooTools to be optional. We're not going to drop it. But we don't. We think it's crazy to, uh, we're touting responsiveness. But if you, 
if you come on a phone, you're loading Mutools and jQuery. That's kind of crazy. Uh, we're going to get all the core functions running on jQuery. That's, that's my personal goal for it. Uh, I'm sure Bootstrap will add their latest version by that time, so we'll have to update. Uh, so it's just more jQuery UI uh, for things like the calendars. When we move over to jQuery from Mutools for things, we need to have the calendar, the color picker. But the good news is that all the stuff that's available in jQuery is cooler than the stuff that's out there from Mutools anyway, so it's, it's going to be way better. Uh, Long-term stuff, uh, something I mocked up for 3.0 that, that we didn't have time for that I hope we can get for 3.5. Uh, I mocked up a whole flow for a better front-end admin user experience. And for anybody with day-to-day -day usage of their site or anybody that has clients, you don't really want them messing around the back end too much, right? Even with the ACL, that's really good now in 3.0 where you could hide everything. It's still, the, it, people just kind of trip on themselves when they see the back end. Uh, I want to I wanna expose as much stuff as we can on the front end. And some stuff should be simple, right? Like in this mock-up I show, if you click edit and it scrolls down the page, this is just the menu item parameters, right? To an end user, it's the page settings. And that's, all, that's, that's the kind of stuff they really need to access. And I show a couple other things, like if you have a menu, it would add an add page link to where you can add a new menu item, right? This is all stuff that's in Joomla, but just expose some of it on the front end. And that's all for me. PC user. <laughs> Just press right. Right, okay. But I'm a quick learner, look at that. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to take a few, a couple minutes to highlight uh, a couple features, uh, other features besides the, the bootstrap stuff that, that made it into 3.0. And then I wanted to take a couple minutes just to talk about the processes that we have for people that want to contribute features or contribute bug fixes to the, to the CMS, okay? So the two features uh, that kind of snuck in are, uh, first of all, Postgres database support, and then the other one we'll talk about is uh, simplifying the language installation. So a lot of you remember that in version 2.5, we introduced uh, support for Microsoft SQL Server. And that was interesting in a couple ways. One, it was, an example of a different kind of paid development that, that uh, actually worked out pretty well. Microsoft was motivated to get SQL Server support in Joomla. We were motivated to create a, a database abstraction layer so that we weren't directly making, uh, you know, we didn't have any code in Joomla that assumed that you had this, you know, MySQL or some other specific database. And so basically Microsoft went out and hired a, a company, Hadoku, to write the platform and the CMS changes to, to make that all happen in a way that then, once they were done, it was much, much, much easier for the next people to come in and, and add an additional database. So that work was all done in, in 2.5, and then, uh, there was ongoing work along that, sort of parallel with that for the Postgres that was finally ready to, to go that we, we were able to sneak it into to version 3.0. So, and of course, it, when you, every time you do that, you find some things you missed. You know, we missed some things with, that worked fine in both My, MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server, but didn't work, you know, in Postgres or something. So there were some of those things that were missed that are now in there. So every time we do one of these now, it should get, it should be easier. But the, the cool thing about this is, you know, we've got these three now, but all that we have to do to add a fourth, fifth, or sixth now is really work on this, uh, you know, add the, the, the driver layer. There shouldn't be any uh, significant changes over in the CMS, which is, which is huge because, I mean, there were hundreds and, I mean, think about every time, every query in the CMS, if you're familiar with the code, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of queries that all had to be looked at, debugged, you know, and tweaked in many cases. So we've made tremendous progress. Now, where do we go from here on this? It is up to the community, okay? You know, we have no, we don't really have any way to predict what, what the uptake is going to be on, on you know, either of these uh, two databases. It requires that the extension developers, you know, a lot, in many cases, they have to go back 
and, and look at their code and make sure that they make the same changes in their components that, that we made in core to, to make sure we're not making any assumptions about the database. So really where we go from here, uh, you know, is up to the community, it's up to the demand out in the marketplace and stuff. But the, the, the core CMS and the platform are, are there already. Okay, so that's kind of exciting. Then the other cool feature, as you know, one of, the, one of the things we've been working on over a period of time is trying to make things easier, make updates easier, the automatic update. Does everybody use that now, the automatic updates? Everybody feel pretty comfortable with that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think that. So um, one of the things we've, we've been working on is to make the language <coughs> stuff both, both more powerful and easier. You know, we've added, as, you, as many of you know, we've added a lot of uh, some uh, multi-language features in the CMS. So there, we expect, to hopefully, to be more people using that, and that means more people installing multiple languages on one site. Well, so we've got this really cool project that was actually a summer of code project by Javier Gomez that and because it's, it's, it's really fun because it's like a lot of different things coming together. Because we have the rapid release cycle now, we're always ready to take you know, new features. So we actually had a summer of code project that was finished and slide the features right into both the 2.5 and the 3.0 release. And this is a really cool feature. If you haven't seen it, you go to the language manager and you get, a, you get a list of all of the officially approved language packs, and you click a couple times install, and you've just installed these languages. Now, to me, this looks like an app store, right? It's an app store for languages. Well, if we can do an app store for languages, we can do an app store for, for other extensions as well, right? So this is really the, you know, again, this is the beginning of, you know, potential development in that direction, okay? So that, that's really cool, I think. So the next I wanted to talk about was just kind of review the, the feature contribution process. And it, it, isn't, it isn't complicated, but it requires that people take some initiative, okay? And, and the Kyle Bootstrap is kind of, a, this whole thing is kind of the, the perfect example of how you would do this on a big feature. And of course, the, the process is gonna be different depending on the scale of the feature and, and, and what the impact is. But the, really the first step is to take the temperature of the community. You know, I've got this great idea, we wanna do this, this, and this. Well, you know, it, it depends on what people think about that. It depends on what the community thinks, it depends on how it fits in with the, the product direction that, that the PLT or other leadership might see. You know, and so, but the first step is to kind of see, okay, is this exciting? And obviously in, in the bootstrap case, there was a tremendous amount of excitement, which is good because if there hadn't been, you know, nobody would have wanted to do something like that, go to all that work if it, if it wasn't the direction that people thought was, was a good direction. Then the next step is to uh, you know, design, throw out some code, throw out a proof of concept, and, and actually you know, back up what you proposed with, with code. At the end of the day, it's all about code, right? And hopefully then, if you've done a really good job on those steps, the rest of it's easy. Because if, if there's a lot of excitement in the community, getting people to test this stuff and give you feedback and, and help you you know, nothing's ever, ever going to work, especially, you know, the big, again, the bigger the feature, the more there's going to be kind of an iterative process. But, you know, Kyle only came to me in tears about three times during the, during the process. But, you know, it, it's, it's hard. The, the more ambitious your, your, your goal is, the harder it is. I mean, Joomla, you know, you've got millions of users. We, we don't want to throw something out there that's, that's not ready for prime time. There are a lot of things that you have to, you know, there's a lot of difference between doing something in the core and doing your own extension. And, and because, you know, if it's your own extension, you say, well, I'm not going to really worry about right to left. I'm not going to worry about accessibility. Or I'm not going to worry about this or that or whatever. And that's your, that's your option when you're building an extension. But obviously in the core, we don't, we don't have that option. You know? 
And I will jump in and say that uh, this, this might look like a lot of different icons and things to do, but with, uh, with GitHub, a lot of this is really easy, actually. Uh, you just create your, you fork the Joomla CMS, you create your branch, and GitHub ha has all these awesome hidden features where you can basically compare your branch to the core, and it's a URL, and when you're, when you're posting this to the tracker, everybody kind of whines that you still have to use the Joomla tracker, but it's super easy. You basically do a pull request over there, but in the tracker, you just, you just add a new item and you tack on .diff if you want to have a diff of it. You tack on .patch if you want to give a patch file. Like GitHub does all the work for you. So essentially, you are just working in GitHub, which everybody these days just wants to work in GitHub, right? And, and all the comments in a lot of that actually does happen on GitHub. So I have all these icons over here, but you really can do most of this in GitHub. It's, it's super simple. Yeah. I mean, my feeling is that given how hard it is to, to write good code, the rest of this is easy, okay? I mean, the hard part is, is, is writing, you know, having the design and writing the, you know, writing the code and stuff. So, and, and that's the way we want to be. We don't want the, we don't want the process to get in the way. But on the other hand, we have to have a process that where people know about the feature, know how to test it, you know, have a way to, to, to give comments, and, you know, we have some way to evaluate it or whatever. So then, again, if you've done a good job on, the, on these other things, getting people to test this should be a piece of cake. I mean, you had, you had dozens of people testing, testing different things. Yeah, and you only really need a couple of tests, right? Like, right, right. I, I would so, tweet it, but then two people had already tested it, so I, you don't even really need to get out there if it's, if it's a right. feature people want. Right, exactly. Yeah, and then the last step is, you know, that we, we merge the thing in. So, again, the idea here is that the process shouldn't be hard uh, other than the inherent difficulty of that it's hard writing software, right? Okay? So the, then an even easier process is the process of fixing bugs and contributing code for, for bug fixes. Because, I mean, we have, we have the issue tracker out there, it's out there 24-7 for anybody that, you know, can't sleep, you know. And, and basically, if you're a coder, you go out to the issue tracker and you look for confirmed issues, right? If you're a tester, now one, th one thing I don't have a slide for, but I want to make a big point of, is that in the bug squad, most of the work is done by non-coders. Okay, let me say it again. Most of the work is done by non-coders. So if you're somebody that knows how to use Joomla and is not afraid of learning a couple new things, you're learning how to apply a patch or how to do a, you know, do a little bit, you don't need to know a lot about Git, but just do a little bit, of, enough of Git so you can keep your, keep your PC repository up to date. And if you want to learn a little bit more about that stuff, then I really encourage you to, to consider helping out the bug squad. You know, there's no minimum requirement, there's no, you know, you just have to be know how to use Joomla and be willing to learn a couple things and you can be because we, we you know we, can't, we always have a backlog of issues that need to be tested so you can either be a tester or a coder if you're if you're a coder you find confirmed issues if you want to test stuff you find issues that are considered pending and, and then if you're a coder you propose a code fix people will automatically pick that up you change the status to pending that tells everybody that that guy's ready to be tested there's feedback in the tracker. Sometimes the patch goes through the first time. Other times, you know, it goes around or, you know, depending on the complexity and the difficulty and stuff. But again, the process is super simple. And, and uh, you know, the bug squad, like I say, is, is the completely open working group. Anybody who wants to be in the bug squad, all I have to do is email me and, and you're in. So, how's it working? Well, I ran some stats year to date, 2012, between 2.5.0 and the 2.5.x series and 3.0, we've added 62 features. We've fixed 745 bugs, and the one I'm really excited about, and this is just the CMS, this didn't include, doesn't include the platform, we have 110 different individuals who have contributed code to the Joomla CMS in calendar year 2012. And some of those people are in this room, so we'd like to have them stand up. When you see your name come up on the screen, 
Stand up. Woo. Thank you very much. That's it. Is that good? Oh. That's it. The timing was almost perfect. Uh -huh. There we go. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it.